So uh, I want to actually thank uh, Sternberg Press for this amazing book, oh, nearly 800 dollars, 800 pages. Uh, uh, then I want to thank Rachel Corbett, the editor, and I want to thank uh, uh, Oscar Magnusson uh, for my glasses. Uh, I love them. <laughs> Some product placement, I'm totally into product placement. And uh, Mark Stu is basically just a product. And obviously, there was a lot of product placement tonight, from Amazon to uh, uh, to Lenin, actually, you know? So, uh, <laughs> Marx and Lenin, I just, uh, you know, I, I was so amazed about this fantastic performance, uh, Marx Punk, with an operatic, uh, you know, opera was basically a 19th century pop culture, pop music. And if you go to La Scala, La Scala in Venice, uh, we have a stand for the microphone that would be actually also easy. Uh, if you go to La Scala, you still have sometimes the, 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 the kind of like feeling of, uh, of a football match, I mean soccer match. You want to stand you have to stand up. Uh, okay. That's a, no, no, we can leave. Okay, I hold it. I hold it. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> so I wanna. I'm, I'm very happy that uh, Martha is here, and uh, I wanna apologize because I tried very hard to, you know. But Martha, no. So are we ready to go here? Yes. We're on. All right. Um, okay. Thank you, performers. And um, I saw that. As version of this performance without the punk element at Theo Westreich's office, so it's changed a little bit, right? right. Sound, I think we needed a bit more quiet. I know it's kind of like, <laughs> but... Um, it's like a rock show. Okay. Yes. It's a rock show plus interviews. So, all right. Well, for your radio audience, um, I am sitting here with Reiner's book that came out how long? Three months ago? Two months yeah, like ago? October or so. Yeah. Okay, the book came out in October, so, and it is called Manhattan Marxism. And it is a compilation of some of his recent texts, some past texts. I selected a little section here. It actually kind of works while people are getting settled. I'm going to read this. I'm going to read this. So this is from Reiner. This is Reiner's voice, published three months ago. He says, for me, Marx symbolizes the promise of justice and a better life. We're talking about Karl Marx. I was going to ask you first if you wanted to talk about Karl Marx or Karl Lagerfeld first, but we're going to talk about Karl Marx. Basically, it's nearly the same. And, and, and let me read this then. So we'll do the we're, But it's a teaser. We're going to get to Karl Lagerfeld later. Okay, so he says, for me, and he doesn't say Karl, but he's talking about Karl. Marx symbolizes the promise of justice and a better life for everybody, but he's also the source of many personal contradictions in my life. I love coffee, chocolate, exotic teas, fast fashion, and other foreign-made goods, most likely... Uh, made by children or other mistreated laborers. I have also greatly profited from a biased capitalist system that extends benefits to some and not to others. It took me a long time to understand how capitalism works, and I was forced to do so largely by accident and praxis. But once I knew how to qualify for credit, I was able to play it to my favor, and I have since enjoyed the fruits of cyclical economics and a taxation system that accommodates those who live on credit and loans. Sometimes I find myself wondering how Karl Marx would have found, found excuse me, would have fared today. It's a dilemma that re resonates in some of my work, most notably in the video, I Hate Karl Marx. But to end this introduction on a more positive note, I'll conclude with one of Marx's own phrases, I am not a Marxist. Are you still not a Marxist? Yes, in a, in a certain way, I wouldn't say I'm a Marxist, okay. but I'm a materialist. Okay, and historical I, materials? Or just yes, materials? I'm a historical materialist. Okay. I'm a historical materialist, yeah. and I am not what's, again, very, very popular, an, an idealist, you know, and in particular, I'm not a millennial in an idealist. Okay. And uh, now, the introduction, which is in a way also a form of self-criticism, yeah. is obviously um, the, the very basis 
of uh, the fact that nearly anybody living in New York City mm -hmm. uh, is is a culprit. Anybody nearly getting by in New York City is already profiting in some other way from from a fundamental uh, structural injustice. You know that, that is basically the order of things here, and that starts uh, with race, that starts with economic uh, discrimination, with educational things, that starts with this nationalism, different nationalism again, and the way things are, are pitched and picked against each other. And it's just endless. It's endless. And and obviously, uh, you know, one of the most uh, influential texts in my life has been from the Frankfurt School, Adorno Horkheimer, in the dialectics of enlightenment, uh, this kind of acknowledgement that any form of civilization, any form of culture is basically the highest form, I mean, they didn't say the highest form, that's actually uh, Lenin, but the highest form of barbarism, it's, let's say, uh, it, it, it has barbarism in itself. And, and that's kind of what we see play out all the time. So I look at Manhattan, at the, at the skylight as Manhattan, like, like a kind of a, a defection of the skin, you know, when you have your skin hurt, you know, you have some kind of infection. You got all these bundles. So all the high rise so is basically an expression of wealth and injustice sucked out of the world and accumulated here. And and all we do, and obviously some better than others, is to basically um, go around. I mean, the contradictions are all over the place. And yes, I did. I was the I was basically forced uh, to to into this kind of, of system and I, I was almost like just very very lucky and that's why I'm staying here. I could like keep my, but it's getting more and more complicated. Yep, uh, absolutely. Whoops, I think I just still waited on all my questions. Um, <laughs> I guess I'll just proceed. Um, so why is it Manhattan Marxism and not, you know, the greater borough Marxism? It's around a kind of concentration of Capital of, but you're saying material. You're saying buildings. You're not saying just. Uh, no, I mean you know. maybe let's talk a bit about uh, materialism. By materialism, I mean really follow the money, mm -hmm. follow uh, power, follow uh, you know where the shit show happens, follow what it costs, follow what are the costs, who profits, who doesn't profit, who's left out, and so on and so forth. So that is. When you go, uh, when you keep these things in mind, you will have, uh, you know, that that is kind of what I understand by materialism, and and um, versus having this idea about how things are supposed to be, and then not uh, realizing the the advantages one has. How about with Amazon though? That's going to be outside of Manhattan if that happens. Oh yeah, I mean, like uh, people nearly killed me and 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 took me off their group uh, their group texts uh, when I said I wanna have those fucking jobs here and I wanna have that fucking that fucking uh, corporate headquarter here, which is actually nothing but a an expression of, of corporate narcissism uh, at a time when. The office space will disappear, and a sign that it disappears for me is WeWork. I happen to have a direct uh, relationship with WeWork because I had uh, to consume, was forced to consume certain services uh, uh, in in an office, which was then moved to WeWork, and so. For okay, about, for those who yeah. don't know, let's explain what WeWork is. Okay. WeWork is like a co-working type space, correct? Yeah, WeWork is, has about a half a million worldwide. It's twenty nine countries. It's the uh, members, half a million members. It's the biggest office uh, provider in the world, and and uh, nearly everywhere around you, you have your work is a certain ideology that seems to be coming in very handy. The, 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 the interesting thing, just like with Amazon, with online streaming, with whole food, is that your work is really great. There's nothing wrong with your work. It's beautiful if you want to just go work. But what it's kind of post studio. Huh? No, but it's a kind of studio. That's exactly. We work. That's exactly. We work art school. But yes, but it is basically a way, what I would say like this: we work yeah. 
is for offices what Amazon was for bookshop and all kind of retail shops. The you know? dematerialized yes. works. And, and it is on top fish. of it. it. It offers itself on top of it as a solution because people are atomized, they are decentralized because of the death, what I would call the death of, public, of a public sphere, the death of a public space, the death of the agora, the death of a meeting place. And so hence the aggregation of everything and everybody online, basically in Amazon space, in Amazon clouds, you know. And we work actually not only uh, lives precisely off this kind of online people who have everything in, their, in the palm of their hands in, in form of their devices, including their depressions, and their remedies, but they also now offer contacts again. And it's really interesting when you, I mean, I don't want, this should be a promotional video for me work, but basically when you say we work, it, it just means all the, off, you have to think about all the offers going on. So what in the in the 70s, when the manufacturing sector disappeared and, and Soho and Tribeca emptied out, the entire manufacturing, uh, textile manufacturing industry disappeared, uh, artists moved into into Soho and Tribeca. Soon we're gonna see artists moving into into office towers. They're gonna help the out. Sorry, yes. just a reminder to to keep the mic close because it's coming in really well on the radio. So can hear you like, clearly. Okay. But I think because you. Okay. You, yeah, yeah. No, I tried to. Uh, calm down. We're yes. recording. Thank you. We're so, recording, you guys. So okay. Yes. So um, have you actually worked in a we work space? I had. I, I have to choose the words, yes. I, I, I'm not a member, but I was a guest, and I consumed services that, that as I services. said. What did they got there? They got uh, what they cappuccino? Was saying, no, 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 not in that sense. No. I, I was, I had, uh, you know, let's do it the other way around. Okay. In WeWork, you have everything. You yeah. have the shrink next to a lawyer, next to a student, Massages? next to, it's to like a Google. Half. It's like yes. a Google campus. You have office for, for the people, though. You have office of the size of a phone book and you have conference rooms. Okay. And now they want to have also a This kind of is turning into an advertisement. Yes, so we should stop it. Okay. But I, I see it again, the same thing, like Amazon is a symptom. And it's very naive to think we can just turn off Amazon. It's not possible. Yeah. Uh, you can, you think you can't. You can't take, per, turn off all Facebook and Google and Amazon related uh, services. It's just seem okay, so how, if you do how that, we, you're, uh, you're not living in this place. How do we apply marks to these uh, new <coughs> modalities, platforms, well, stacks, if you will? Like, for example, when it comes to, uh, again, back to, to Queen's headquarters thing, uh -huh. uh, these jobs uh, were pure narcissistically um, uh, imagined by Bezos in Queens so he could make a selfie uh, from his helicopter pad with Manhattan skyline on one hand but also uh, he would know all the Manhattanites and everybody coming as a tourist and that's what New York seems to turn soon into in a kind of a Venice uh, uh, and it's already flooded, so we already have Canal Street, so it's Canal A Grande, already uh, not, we are actually sitting on it. Uh, so so then can they can see the headboard. But yeah. basically, what I was, what I, narcissistic looking at it is like, there are 25,000 jobs, no matter how, uh, how good or bad, what they do, uh, that would have been here. Yeah. Uh, for, like an insane amount, for an insane amount of money, you know, and I just saw it's hilarious by, by those people who said, no, we don't want Amazon, we want proper chops, but actually what they chase from there are proper chops. Uh -huh. and, uh, so again, I'm not saying the company is bad, and from a, pro from a perspective of protesting, uh, from a perspective of uh, critique, you know, and obviously this shit needs to be critiqued, you know, it is easier if you have a headquarter in town where you can go every weekend and every text, and when they're just gone and from too afraid, they It's like Ikea. Yes. It's a little out of, the, out of the way. I'll say Amazon's bad. You don't have to. I'll no, say it is bad. bad. But it's yeah. us. Amazon is us. Yeah, it is all yeah. bad. And it's us. It's our society. Okay, so um, here you've made this opera, and now you've you know made a kind of like bifurcated opera punk mashup about these topics, companies, 
Manhattan Marxism. Was this piece that we just heard, is that called Manhattan Marxism? Yeah, or? it's all, uh, you know, I do the same thing like these companies where they all like link into link. So yeah. first uh, Manhattan Marxism, uh, but then Marx Park, and then obviously there's no punk anymore. It's like Marx Opera. It's, what what uh, about the people who played though? I mean, and, would they like to yeah, tell there's no more punk? Actually, I am incredibly fortunate post, post that I found this. You, you have to ask him. You know, I don't want to qualify or anything. But but mm -hmm. I think I like to call it punk because the word punk is still somehow in, has some currency. Sure. It is to say, it dates me if you want, if you want to hear it that way. Uh, it is interesting, uh, and it, it's a, it's just like very short, you know, yep. and it's just what it is, punk. And I think Sounds they did good. a fantastic job. I think it was, I think it was great too. Kind of reminded me of the old knitting factory, except that was not on the second floor. That was on the sub ground. Floor. Again, it's about the versatility of things, you know. Yes. This could be poetry. You know, this could be it's better than poetry. Yeah, it could be read as a libretto, as I said. Yeah. It could be and now he says no, but it could be also a film. Yeah. You know, we could also make a film. It could be a make a, it could. A, a Netflix video with that if you want. Okay, so uh, let's uh, talk about the fashion component. We didn't have any fashion here tonight, but that's been. A, when did you start doing the uh, fashion shows? Five well, years ago. Four actually, years ago? the very first time. I did this shit. I started with this thing was when I was invited for just a reading, yeah. uh, a reading thing to Manchester, to Manchester, England. And immediately what came to mind was like, uh, you know, England, uh, you know, the book The Condition of the Working Class yeah. by by Engels, in which came out in the forties. And Engels is obviously it's in, in Thank you from the audience. Hi, it's reminding us. 1840. There's a difference. We're in the 21st century. Yes. I also, no, I should I, say here, as a bracket, I've known yeah. around here for 20 years at this point. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I, we met in the pottery workshops. We, and like, no, pottery. we did. We met at a ceramics biennial in yeah, Albusola. Yeah, that's a nice way to put it. And then, <laughs> and then we went down and I did a, one of the reading seminars in Florence, reading Gramsci yeah. in Florence, Gramsci. and then I thought, oh, this is sort of interesting. So I wrote it up for Art Forum, and then I've written on numerous occasions, probably once every five years, I'll write something about your work. That's maybe the last time Art Forum wrote about me, because... No, uh, I because I wrote about the show in <laughs> Columbia, at the Wallet Gallery. I wrote oh, about that oh, for Art Forum too, remember? Right away. Yeah, a kind of long pedagogical trace. So. Okay. What so okay. So but so that's how I know that fashion wasn't in the picture 20 years ago or 15 years ago. No, that it's a slightly new development. Yeah. It, the first time I picked up was actually interesting because I knew that that uh, Marx was supported by Engels, who was the son of a of a mill owner. Yeah. Know, a, a car, yeah. Yeah. And and there, uh, Engels fell in love with a woman. Mary Burns, who allowed him like first hand access out of love into, the, into what they call what they would call the slums or what they you know do those like Irish quarters, you know, which yeah. was not so easy. And and that was a big game changer uh, for for uh, Europe and obviously for the United States, you know. Marx actually wrote on a regular basis for the for the Amsterdam Observer or use like a precursor of the New Times or something like that. Yeah. So he was informed in Brexit and it was uh, signed by Marx and read by Engels and the money went obviously to Marx. And uh, so you just on every level, you, you know, you see these contradictions. But uh, there I made a there's, a, there's a description, the condition of the working class about closing. And, and he describes what he called devil's dust. And devil's dust? Devil's dust, devil's yes, dust. the devil's dust. Uh -huh. What's and the devil's the dust? The devil's dust is the What way. is that in German? No, no, it's just, I, I don't know it in German, I read it. Oh, it was English. Devil's okay. dust is, 
the Faustian dress, and that's another term by him, the Faustian dress, or Faustian dress, nobody even knows in England how to pronounce it. And that's the very, the very close of, 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 of the pool in Manchester. And yeah. what's interesting is the wool which they were used to uh, disappeared, and people started to, were very happy, and actually not for the climate appropriate, the cotton, which is obviously a colonial product. Yeah. And, and then I started, and so uh, the oh, wait a minute, what about cotton? in Manchester? Yeah, I mean, cotton, you know, in, that's You mean colonial. they imported the cotton up to yes, Manchester? Yes, yes. Okay, that's got it. In the yeah. they, didn't make, they didn't make wood products, they made yeah. cotton products, and that's where the slavery starts. So and, what, uh, what was their stance on apparel? Well, this yes. is before ready-made, yeah. right? They're just yeah. making cloth. You know, uh, the, that, in, that industry financed uh, slave trade, and the slave trade financed the, the textile industry. Yeah. Financed industrialization. That the slave trade financed industrializations. And uh, even the Irish were sold, I mean, there were white slaves in the US as well. But uh, so there, based on this description of the outfits of the working class, that has like snippets and, and everything yeah. that they just could find it in paper. I started making my first dresses. Do you make it with a sewing machine or no, these garments I made it with a sewing uh, machine? Is that like, what we're talking about in Manchester in the 19th century that you would have to fashion a garment? You wouldn't really be able to sew your garment because you didn't have access to the apparatus type of thing? Or what well, was it? I, what, what I did for my very first dress in that sense was to just rip off the pages yeah. and uh, off besides the text where it describes uh, the condition of the working class, like the outfits, and I was uh, basically taping it around it, yeah. and then I got that outfit. And then from there, I started to make also jewelry and other things, and then I was invited once by a Swiss Liechtenstein Museum that had a lot of money yeah. to, to, to show this in a show about uh, jokes, you know, which is where it's about art. jokes, yeah, like yeah. funniness, or yeah, like, you know, like artists make jokes, yeah. And so, my so that's how, and I asked uh, for money, and they started, and I was able to first first time to to uh, pay for tailors and, uh, and work. Uh, but the you know, the back to the jokes thing, the fashion yeah. has a slight joke sort of feel to it. Any bit of a joke? Yes, but it depends, you know, there are different sections. Yeah. Uh, as I said, you know, in the beginning, that was definitely the case where obviously I work with slogans, this kind of textile and textile. I like always textile equal, you know, if I'm from a German perspective, uh, textile and textile, you know, you'd be kind of like trying to stretch words and, and, and there's a certain liberty of. I mean, I'm a misspeller, I'm a fundamental misspeller. How many languages do you know now? I, I, I don't really know other, any language, know this, but I have uh, been learning over 10. And yeah. I can maybe speak in you know, not in You still in Chinese? Arabic? Yes, I study, I study mostly yeah. Chinese. I want to be Chinese, actually. That's yeah. actually my current. I remember that video. OK, so let's move them sideways from Karl Marx to Karl Lagerfeld. I know this recent um, passing of this German fashion icon has struck you deeply. And uh, but tell us a little about your thoughts on Karl Lagerfeld. Well, I was most impressed uh, by what I just learned since he died yeah. about his cat. I didn't know he had a cat. Uh -huh. and, and I just, uh, basically, I get uh, you know on my phone, The New Yorker, yeah. and it's, the story starts with the, the cat, and I never made it beyond that story, by the way. I never made it beyond the page one, you know. Right. What's the but, cat's name again? Uh, Choupette. Choupette. And, and I thought, this is amazing, you know, because the, the cat had uh, two, two, like, uh, assistants, a cook, yeah. and a hairdresser. Right. And lots of diamonds, <laughs> and was on, and was permanently uh, an Instagram account where he's permanently or she Choupette is kind of female Choupette Choo 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 is kind of like yep. sweet Choupette little little sweet is basically on the chat is laughing at all the time, and then you start to think wow, but then you realize oh wow he has modeling contracts in the in the multi in the multi millions. 
these all kind of properties, you know, you can buy, for example, uh, from uh, from the biggest German toy maker for four hundred dollar, she had toys again from product. Gotcha. Well, now what's happened now that but, Carl has passed into the next? Life. Yeah, and, what's and happened to Choupette? Yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, so Choupette keeps living on, and he he officially inherited everything. So, so he or the cat, let's say she, she Choupette is is uh, you know at least I was told. Yeah. Uh, I didn't follow it, but I was told, and that's already sufficient in today's uh, you know information uh, driven you know uh, infotainment society. Uh, I was told that the cat owns everything, but needless to say, it's like a fun it's the cat, the cat doesn't matter. Who, but yeah. it's a fantastic way how he plays the things. And, and this is what makes actually Karl non stop plays also with Karl Marx, uh, a Marxist, because everything he does, he made money off it, you know. So he didn't, he hated that cat most likely. And just. You know, I don't think so. I saw just, a photo of him and the cat was nearby. It was, it maybe was his muse, his kind of deeper companion. Yeah. He worked at a very um, cluttered desk, kind of beyond cluttered, and the cat would be in the mess along with the books for and the me, papers. For me, Lagerfeld yeah. just wanted to outdo the, the Japanese or whoever owns Hello Kitty. And, but he wanted to do it with the Lagerfeld cat. You know? I love cat. He might have had a cat or not, but it doesn't matter. He has enough people employed to just take care of the cat, the cat that is called the Chopin Diary, Instagram, and, and that cat has modeling contracts that pay for a lot of things, also Japanese, uh, Japanese eyelash. I don't know this conference, Ue Mura, yes, I think it's called. Okay, it's yeah, uh, yeah, Ue Mura. Um, so, um, let's, move, okay, so let's move a little bit, since you brought up Instagram, one of your favorite platforms, and we were talking about this a little bit more. Yeah, platform du jour. Platform du jour. What do you, you got to say about it? What do you want to say about Instagram? It's the same thing, you know. Uh, it, you think you escape Facebook, and yet it's owned by them. And you, 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 you know, obviously, use an extremely nature destroying uh, thing. You think it's so clean because your desk has nothing on it. But actually, uh, alone, uh, a regular, like old style email, you use so much energy up. It's insane. You do not realize how many, for, how big the forestation is. So we're burning the energy. <laughs> Yes, my, so my, my just you don't stop have these problems. Yeah. And, and yet, you know, what I find interesting about Instagram is obviously yeah. that it, it caters to this kind of, uh, you know, instant consciousness where people are permanently uh, connected and create between them uh, a substitute that is, um, uh, serving, giving you some kind of an orientation since the master discourse, the master media, uh, the master canon in everything has disappeared. And so, oh, so you're saying that Instagram is the new master canon? Well, it's not Instagram, it's the platform that makes broadcast everybody. Yeah. And so everyone is kind of happy, but it's, it's stunning. Uh, the psychology of it, you know, it's studying, you know, uh, how, for example, it creates a, a psychological uh, industry around it to support, you know, support all the, yeah, support all the countless feelings, ideas, and so on and so forth, you know, yeah. and, and, but it destroys the whole family, you know, yeah. it destroys, uh, you know, it, it, it kind of destroys a certain kind of a negotiator, um, you know, soon like public sphere, yeah, different public sphere. sphere. What do you have to say about the public mass, sphere? Well, so how about the public sphere in, in light of Instagram? And well, that's what is substituting for uh, the public sphere. I see, that is what we get. That what we form uh, is with the public sphere. And and now it's interesting. I'm not even interested anymore. Can we get Q and A. Yeah. 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 Okay. Can we get time? And more product placement, Kai Matsumiya, my leader. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm Reiner Steeler. Um, we have a lot of really interesting exchanges after midnight, you know, uh, that's not to be publicized. 
Uh, but one thing that I'm really interested in, in Ron, is that you often take these really unpopular opinions. Uh, one thing that you've really professed here uh, with the music, uh, with the opera and the punk, is uh, you know your support for Amazon, uh, which was just recently rejected. Um, but one thing that you know, I, I think that, that that causes a little bit stir in people for a number of reasons. One is that for people on the left, um, and for a good number of people who believe in Marx, they'll ask the question, um, whose interests does this serve, right? And that answer is very obvious, in my opinion. I'm not a very good representative for you in some ways, because we have a lot of arguments here. Um, but you do, at least in your art practice, uh, show the complexities of what is symptomatic. And the artist is a part of this entire like, incentive. Um, and so one of the things I'd like, well, I'd like to know here, um, and let's, let's, bring it out in the, let's bring it on the agora, you know, the form, you know, in the way that you express here, as your dealer in this Manhattan Marx situation, I'm supposed to advertise you, but I'm not, but I have to kind of challenge you here, because I'm supposed to sell your work, uh, is like this, is this question, is that as an artist, how can you reconcile that circumstance being very pro Amazon and lamenting it no, very publicly on Instagram, um, and uh, I'm calling it the, the Kanye clause. Okay, well, you're trying to get the microphone away from Kanye me. Clause. <laughs> but are you just are, are you just advertising yourself or mm -hmm. art practice? Yeah, just, I'll, I'll okay, so the, 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 so what I just want to say this right here is that how can you face the accusations of being a bourgeois artist? Um, Marx said he's not a Marxist, uh, and so what are you? <laughs> Again, uh, I, I, you know, I'm just like on the same page with everybody in here. Uh, Amazon is highly problematic, but Amazon is we all. Amazon is our society, and I'm highly problematic of that. I'm not a rep of Amazon, but what I wanted to have are 25,000 jobs that make 150 on average, and the symbolism of Amazon here as a tech, as a tech capital. Because now we symbolize, you can't do business in New York. You symbolize uh, that you symbolize uh, that actually no headquarters needed at all. Because as you know, Amazon is not going anywhere else. Amazon just doesn't need a headquarters. No, it doesn't need a headquarters. This entire vessel thing was a spleen. It was necessary. Uh, at a time where Walt goes down the hall, where the office goes down the hall, where where there is not anymore a marketplace, you know, marketplaces are now in the cloud, hence Amazon. So for me, no, 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 Kai, it is not your conversation. You put yourself on the calendar as with Montes uh, Monte well, Press I'll Radio. No, 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 no. I'll no. step in for Kai, though. No, but I, mean, I want to no, say no, you're no, a little turn code. You were a little turncoat, Kai, because you were on Amazon side when it came to the headquarter. Then, when when everybody started to scream loud, you were uh, you were uh, against Amazon. And then, when it was when they were gone, and now the biggest the biggest and now it's almost like a witch hunt who chased Amazon away. And the people who from Queens wanted it, you know, the the people from the project. They are mad because they're not getting the schools promised, they're not getting which were in the planning, they're not getting the jobs, etc. So, alone, a part of Amazon, the tax base, if you go to the tax base from 25,000 jobs, 25,000 jobs that make 150 a year, the tax base alone, so we don't even need fucking Amazon where they pay taxes a lot, but the activity they generate, the taxes. Uh, okay, they bring and so on. Hands. You know, that's oh, what is interesting to me. And what you do, you <laughs> are, uh, yeah. uh, uh, you know, yeah. if you take that position, because yeah. you seem to have switched one more time, and I can show you your email where you said you are totally, you are totally right in this. But I just can you tell me, you are a good example of uh, millennial 
idealism, millennial socialism, you know. Okay, can I respond to that? I mean, Mark, they can say something on the response. No, no, but Kai, I'm here with Kai. He has the microphone. I'm here, yes, Kai, because Kai, you heard me, your audience, sorry. Well, okay, first of all, with Amazon, I don't want to talk about Amazon. I hate Amazon as you do. And it's not all of it. It's not all of the cloud. That's the trick, of course. So I'm not a proponent and a representative of Amazon. Fuck Amazon. I can't say the same thing. But I use it for women to order. Something we talked about a little bit earlier is when you're talking about German idealism, you know, you've got, you're still driving off of Marx. You've got, you just said millennial idealism. What's the difference between millennial idealism and millennial Yes, uh, millennial idealism and millennial socialism. Hi, hi. Yes, this is, is, is for example, are the people people who get their money from their parents, uh -huh. who most likely live with their parents, who have very high high Ivy Ivy League uh, supported uh, ethics. And do not understand that you need to have work a city like New York, which is fundamentally nothing but an expression of, uh, you know, injustice. Yet, uh, problems, the best idea for justice, you know, I have to say that's Manhattan Marxism. It's the most idealistic place. I went here and studied at the Whitney program. Marxism. I, I love it. You know, you have the best Marxists here. I love it. You have the best critical minds here. Some of them sitting here. I love it. And yeah. yet, you cannot say, you know, you go to you go to, to, to schools, it's fantastic how people interact. It's 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 amazing the ethics so of it. it. Yet it is within a within a framework that is completely exploitative, you know. It's a, take chocolate, for example. I talk you talk, I wanna say that why I am not for child labor. I am of course not for China. It's it's disastrous. But uh -huh. when you deal with chocolate, yeah. you have child labor involved because there's no way the chocolate bean can be, let's say, uh, harvested uh, like you can harvest, for example, cotton. Yeah. There's always slave labor involved, whether we like it or not. Fair trade starts when the coffee, or the coffee bean, or uh, actually, particularly the the chocolate bean, is at the marketplace. Then fair trade starts. Then, but nobody knows what happens before. And before we have miserable, miserable, really miserable conditions. And that's what it is. And the same goes with fashion. The same goes with fashion. And Mark, the same well, goes well, with well, a lot well, of other. You're not kind no, of no, 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 like, yeah. like Reiner is very complex, you know, he's not like a bullshit, like, bourgeois, symptomatic artist like Thomas Hirshhorn, right? Thomas Hirshhorn, like the Ground Chief Project, You know, there's a lot of problems here because he's narcissistic, um, and unlike Hirshhorn, you're always dignifying people here, all different kinds of people. Tom Hirshhorn, he doesn't give a shit. Like he's going to use very poor uh, people in the project as subjects um, in the name of theory. You're not like that. You have an activist component to you, and you know I see that. And, and you know, he's just like like Swiss and like blah 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 blah. Like really, it's really insulting. I, I really don't like that. Um, you're not like that, okay, Ryan? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. No, 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 give it back. You don't want to no, give, no, no, give it back. No, no, you don't want to talk about him, no, Sean. No, no, let no, him no, be. Let him be. Let him be. Let him eat chocolate. But what I'm saying, okay, the question is, you know, of course you do. No, but no. Let's talk about something. Show them your tests. Okay. But, but the thing that <laughs> 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 the question is here is that 
you know, we're living, in, we're living in dark times. We're living in dark times, sir. Like, are you gonna take a side, or are you just a Manhattan Marxist artist? And no, we're just gonna show, like, how, like, let me things are for the name of how difficult things let's, are. Like, let me answer this after this segment. I answer this question after segment. Okay, we're gonna. And I don't wanna like talk bad about Kishore. Let's talk about him later. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna so move Mark away from uh, Manhattan and talk about Gucci yeah. <laughs> and what you were doing in Italy. Yeah. So do you want to tell us a little there? Different labor situation, <laughs> yeah. different Marxist situation. Yeah. Well, uh, that's what I call Marx of Prada, Gucci of Prada. I was invited by by the city of Prague to a museum. What we have oh, only five minutes late. Okay, five minutes late. Yeah, Very briefly. Sure. Anyway, I I did a project which <laughs> then the city didn't like. I was able to uh, make my own fabrics, you know, in the same factory where Gucci produces, where Hermes produces and so on. Where actually this this fabric was produced. Uh, fabric he's wearing. This, yes. So and so what I did is uh, I I made a show and I made this right and I got this amazing funding to make these incredible shows and I yeah. insist and but I also made something for the workers because the thing there what's interesting there it's Chinese capital Chinese labor Chinese consumers and and this is kind of uh, a very complicated exchange between the Chinese community who owns actually most of the production sites and we'll the Italians. Uh, 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 now that what I wanted China? to say, what I wanted to say. Well don't even think that 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 the Apple has much to do with America. There is the PLAs, the People's Liberation Army, sits in there and, and has a backdrop, the same backdoor most likely like the yep. NSA, the National Security Agency. So, so you're, and that's ridiculous what Trump is doing, like Millet style of Huawei, you know, and the Germans are now all investing in Huawei, you know, which is basically the Chinese infrastructure with a better product, you know, and they do not actually trust Trump and uh, they go with the Chinese in this sense, but it should give you, so what I'm basically saying, and uh, okay, back we to only got, Well, back we only got two minutes, yes, so we should two probably minutes. So, so what I want to say is, I insisted, here. I insisted, <laughs> to have material that I Googled about the condition of the working people there, which were beaten up, which had fires, which were really uh, in, in horrible, uh, uh, had a horrible predicament, projected to the fashion show, and then I was beaten off the stage, I was harassed, and, and, it, and it was a kind of an institutional harassment, and now I do a work I call institutional harassment. Therefore, Gucci, please help me. Gucci was not involved at all, except yep. that I copied him, and I used him, and I learned from him, but uh, I asked Gucci to help me. Gucci, please help me, dot com, you can see, and also Centro Pecci, Centro Pecci, Rescue Centro Pecci, because the director, uh, Christina Pierella, was, was really, <laughs> Uh, dragging me through all this nonsense. Okay, and let's uh, okay. let's figure. We only have about two minutes left okay, here. Good. So okay, so to bring it back to this evening, to this music, are we here for activism? Are we here for pleasure? Are we here for what are we here for? I think we are here for reflection. You know, I still think that art is a place. No, for thinking, for for symbolism, for activism, yep. for changing the world. Yes, nonetheless. Okay. You know, I'm also. By the way, when I say millennial, it's not a question of how old you are. It's just like what our time is. Because, gotcha. because millennial like narcissist is sitting in the, in the in the in in Washington. Yeah, you know, he's the biggest uh, millennial in that way. You know, he needs the, the path of us. You know. Yeah. And. But, but uh, so it's not age related. Okay, and so what's what's the next well, project for the, you and well, what's our I directive do, that we're gonna take out of here? The yeah. next project is uh, also with Monte Perez to have actually the actual Prato uh, fashion show stage. <laughs> <laughs> not here, but here. I think he just No, no, no. Uh, should we shut it but you know, basically, you know, basically, the last thing I want to say is basically, I'm content to be just like uh, ghettoized in my little Instagram thing. You know, yeah, I have sure. most of my, I'm bored by shows, and yeah. when shows, I just deal as, as Instagram background, yeah. you know, yeah. and that's it. You know, well, you always have people like me, hi, there's always another person <laughs> who wants to support you, another crazy lunatic. 
Let's give Kai the mic here. Uh, no, no, no I mean, thing. sorry about the, the disputations, but I can say this, that uh, Reiner's always been an artist that, I, I think that in, in a lot of ways where we fell yeah. off was that we would try to meet the expectations, but Reiner's always been, been there to challenge the, the expectations that society has for us. All the fundamental expectations, and it's always going to be controversial. And I'm, I'm very proud to represent him. Um, and he's always going to be there to question us, even if you disagree. But he's always willing to, uh, to discuss about it. Um, and you. so That's with that, I think that he's... Nice uh, ending, and then so there's also funny. another thing is that he's, he's always <laughs> keeping in mind to dignify everyone here. Um, yeah. Even though he supports Amazon. I do a lot of